You're listening to the Game Tenants Podcast. What's up, and welcome to the Game Tennis Podcast, the failed adventures of two gamers and their quest for Gamecast stardom. AKA worthlessly lazy, but so game crazy! Uh, this is episode 105, and I'm Church of the Game Grinder, and as always, joined by my excellent co-host, Jason of Corpse Flood Gaming. And as is tradition for our last podcast of the year, we are accompanied by none other than Chris, the old-ass <laughs> retro gamer. That's Hello me. There. How, how are you guys doing? Oh no, pretty good. How is you? And how is you? Vacation. What's that? What's that? It's wonderful. It's excellent. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's wonderful. I make do. I by playing games at work, apparently. <laughs> but also still doing a good job. Yeah. There's balance. And uh, uh, and then for anybody tuning in, uh, we are doing video for once rare Look occasion i was i was bullied into it yeah super bully super, brothers super bully brothers <laughs> and then uh chris, or else <laughs> chris <laughs> just in case anybody listening or watching doesn't know who you are uh who the heck are you who's this I guy am the old ass retro gamer what a neat i thought you're getting no <laughs> <laughs> no i have a youtube channel um where i talk about video games and sometimes movies sure. um also, randomly stream on Twitch and uh, have a couple of podcasts that I do. One with somebody that I'm looking at on screen right here. <laughs> now the one in the middle. Super <laughs> Bros. <laughs> yeah. And I also have a movie podcast. We do uh, commentary tracks for films called Shh, The Movie is Starting. Hell yeah. And Excellent. we've both been guests. And you guys have both been guests multiple times, yes. How does this work out? Small world. I know, yeah, right? right? A lot of nepotism going on here. Friendship. Oh, Friendship. <laughs> we got the, we're, we're the click. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's worth mentioning that if you go back through the podcast every year, last podcast of the year, we always have Chris on talk about our uh, games of the year. And we got it. It's a quote Fiddler on the Roof tradition. <laughs> Sure. I'll just take That's your as close as I ever get to talking about a musical. There we go. Well, Captain EO, that was pretty solid. <laughs> Don't know that one. Michael Jackson ride at uh, or a movie that they played at uh, Epcot Center at uh, <laughs> Disney, Disney World. It's, it's pretty, uh, pretty not fantastic. Just like yeah. any movie featuring him. You don't see uh, Francis Ford Coppola adding that one to his resume all the time, do you? <laughs> and there's a few good musicals out there, but... Repo the genetic opera. That's all you, one you need to know. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> yeah, we're not the, the musical film podcast. We're the Game Tennis podcast. We so sure we're going to talk about video games. Stop making me go off on tangents. <laughs> Have you played video games, guys, this year? A few. Yeah. Wow. Not as many. What? Yeah. Not as not many. As, my not video as many game habits though. are very lacking compared to a certain somebody I'm looking at right now. Yeah, right. Ah, the madman. Why am I? Why am I? Am I in the middle just to get bullied? Yeah. Yes. Sides. <laughs> See now it's switched. Now we're the super bully brothers. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, I guess before we get on to, or before we get on to talking about all those new games and the games we beat this year, let's look at a game from. Maybe yesteryear, maybe back in the day, retro game highlight. All right, so last time on the retro game highlight, I talked about Secret of Evermore, which is highly underrated, I think. I like it. Yeah. Uh, so Not that at Midwest Gaming Classic. Yes. From your from your friend. Uh, yeah, that's right. I got it from from Cardboard Zero. Sweet. Ooh. I bought Ogre Battle from him. I think the same time. Uh, so as is tradition, again, uh, when we have guests on, they uh, do the retro game highlights. So, Chris, what do you got for us? What is your retro game highlight? 
What is this? Oh my god. Jason's gonna hate it because of the format it's in. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> ah, Paloma. <laughs> Philosoma. Let's do it now. Uh yeah, Philosoma is like one of my all-time favorite shooters. It's I think the game that got me back into shooters when it first came out because I had kind of stopped liking them. What? Uh, at one point during then. like the 16-bit era. Uh-huh. Uh, but it's really unique in that it, it on the surface is just another standard shmup, but as you play it, the, sh- the perspective keeps shifting on you. So it starts off as a horizontal scrolling shooter, beat the mini boss. You get a cut scene that shows your ship going into the screen and then the game picks up right there. Now you're doing it into the screen shmup oh, and then okay. you beat that mini boss and then the screen shifts. And now you're doing a vertically scrolling shmup. Okay, and so then like you beat that mini boss, and now you're going into the screen, and there's things coming from behind you. Mm. It is constantly shifting the perspective, and I think it makes it really unique. And uh, the storyline is actually kind of twisted and gross. Oh, um, I like it. Yeah, it's uh, got great music. Gameplay is fantastic. It's like a pretty close, I guess, I guess to a launch game for the PS1. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, Philosophy has like always been one of my favorites. I consider this one of my diamond in the roughs. So I figured I'd bring that one up. I'm glad you did because now I gotta buy it in a yeah, show box do. or cut, yeah, or cut the box to fit my show. <laughs> Just crush it down, man. <laughs> get to get out the old chop saw. <laughs> do now. <laughs> Perfect. Man. I wonder if that's been released on any other collections. Who um it kind of reminds me of Sign More. Well, it was, uh, it was released it. by Sony. Yeah, it only has Sony on it. Mm. It's a, yeah. It sounds like Sign More the way you described it. Yeah, yeah. And it's as far as I can tell, it's not on anything else. Piss. PS One exclusive. Neat. But yes, I, I highly recommend it. It's been a it's been one of my favorites since it came out. Awesome. Cool. So I uh, got a few news things. Nothing. Uh, no, not like news discussion things a couple quick shout outs that i like to do um saga frontier remaster announced i'm uh, finally talking about it yeah that's so awesome what's like, that then? S- saga frontier remastered oh okay uh <laughs> yeah saga uh, i'm mostly familiar <laughs> with saga frontier playstation one uh, that was when square was like experimenting squaresoft Mm-hmm. was experimenting with their games, putting out some very unique stuff. Um, and it's been a series since then. There's a whole bunch of sequels. I've never played any of them. Uh, I had originally borrowed Saga Frontier from a friend, and it's a very cryptic game, so I was never able to finish it. But Scared of crypts? Yeah. What? <laughs> Why? The gang? Why? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so randomly out of nowhere, nobody expected it. They just got announced that there will be a remaster of it coming out for sounds like all systems. Is it uh, really that popular of a game? Do it on both. It has a niche. One it definitely has a niche. Okay. At least do one and two. Might as well do I mean, I can see, I can see, um, Secret of Mana, but like uh, Frontier, I've never really. It's, I think it's it's. Heard uh, much I don't of. think they're remaking. I think they're just doing a remaster. So okay. like upscaling. I'm, I'm assuming. So okay. Because I know I remember at times it could be a little chunk. You know, those PS One games could be a little chunky. Oh, a lot chunky. <laughs> from, from being chunky, yeah. like me. I, I <laughs> a lot of people do though. Um. Then besides that, uh, I always like to shout out uh, the Gamers documentary series. Gamers spelled G V M E R S in all caps. Make some of the best gaming documentaries available. And Ooh. since our last episode, they've put out two. One on the troubled development of Alan Wake and the the troubled development of Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, they also trouble have their, how. Yeah, you have to watch. Oh, damn it! Cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I watched I watched the first one there, the Alan Wake one. Uh, I might have. I think I started Kotor, but. Uh, I was at work and it was right before I was done. So, Should have gotten some oh. overtime, bro. Yeah. <laughs> nah. Nah. I put, <laughs> I put in my time and I go home. But uh, yeah. 
They they are. I have to second it. They are pretty awesome. Well, I, I know nothing about them until you brought it up, so I will have to you check it out. You don't listen to the podcast enough, apparently. Come on, man. I do. I do. <laughs> he skims it. Back doesn't mean. Out. Doesn't mean it. It's, doesn't mean it all sticks. <laughs> right. No, it's it's fine. Uh, yeah, definitely check out gamers. Um, also, uh, no clip is another uh, good documentary maker on gaming. Big big production. Um, yeah. So uh, we're pretty quickly here. We're going to be jumping into our our game of the year discussion. But I just wanted to touch on because uh, I I I, I, just got I know a lot of people. I know a lot of people don't care about the video game awards, but I enjoy watching the video game awards, mostly for game announcements and whatnot. And yeah, uh, I, it's kind of fun being in the discussion what's going on. As far as uh, as far as things that are, are rumored to be going away, like E3 and stuff like that, I'd I'd be fine if they just <laughs> got rid of the game awards and just released the trailers. Like that's all I watch of it. The performances. Yeah. Are usually something I don't care about. It's usually some kind of like dubstep or some other shit. And it's just like any other, it's just like any other award show. Like the same couple of games sweep everything. Huh, how's it going? Are you all right? You that's fine. Me? That's fine if certain games are are, are like sweeping winners. But I, I think it's nice to celebrate like you know the quality video games, give them a little attention. There's a little you know. There's definitely the whole marketing. Yeah. Spirit. And then, then they get do things like audience choice, and g- the general audiences are not people I ever agree with. Yeah, I'm su- I'm surprised you're even bringing that, bringing them up anymore. Because I know I know how you feel about their choices for game of the year. I saw <laughs> yeah. it on like any time they posted anything about it. Yeah, they're, they're wrong. <laughs> Quite and, vocal, and especially like this this year in particular, I'm very passionate about my opinion for some reason like i I, I, i'm welcoming but it's like it's a year on games come on you needed you needed you needed to come at me bro you needed to speak to jeff (laughs) keely you want to you told the game awards you wanted to speak to their manager yeah yeah don't be a don't be a video game karen okay (laughs) well i thought uh, from what i've seen it, it might be warranted they're pretty good things about yeah, what I yeah. know, what we all know you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, I, I think this year for the video game awards is pretty what everybody expected. Like, it's going to be like The Last of Us 2 stuff, Ghost of Tsushima, you know, Final Fantasy. They're all going to get their categories as they did. Um, but I just want to say, just got to say, it, I got to say it, that Half Life it! was snubbed. <laughs> I got VR game, which it deserved, but it, oh, I, I think it was also a game of the year nomination. 13 Sentinels, I think, should have got a little bit more attention. And why did they do the very first five minutes of the video game awards? First five minutes, they did just like, oh, uh, real quick, here, uh, best game soundtracks of the year. Uh, uh, forget about them. I thought you were going to say it was a commercial for Grand Theft Auto V coming out on the next gen systems. <laughs> <laughs> Pay. No, but even before <laughs> that, it, yeah, they like gave like no attention, whatever, whatsoever to video game music. They're like, it was seriously, the first five minutes, they just like, oh, this is what it is, real quick. And it was Final Fantasy VII remake one, which I I'm happy about. But it's like video game music, such a big, big thing, big part of video. I love video it game can music, make like, it can make it can make a game. Like yeah. a game could be like that's oh, all right, but like the music can like really get you into it. Hell yeah. Like, or it can ruin it. You'd be like, "This is trash." Like that X Men game on the Genesis, where I was like, "Wow, I think I might play this on mute." It just sounds like they're taking an electric razor on a metal bowl the whole time. Yeah, I was just like, "What is this?" <laughs> this is around the the animated series is out. Why is this mute? Why is this music playing? Yeah, when you could, I would chewing I, on a metal cable. Yeah, <laughs> I would rather them loop the the. <laughs> animated series song over and over through the whole game because I don't think I could ever get sick of that song. That being you said... You that on harmonica, though. Yeah. <laughs> Pop, is that a challenge for 2020? Is that a... 2021. Yeah. When, when, when I, I come back the... next year, I want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll learn that on the pan flute just to yeah. spite you. Be like, oh, no harmonica. The kazoo. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, then overall, like for me, I mean, a lot of people don't care. They're like, stop announcing games like this. But the the Dragon Age Four Mass Effect uh, teasers that didn't show much or anything at all. It's just hey, the fact that they're like, yes, we are doing more Mass Effect. For me, it's like, yeah, that's all I need to know. Uh, Got your heart a flutter. Feels so good right here, and then the Dragon Age. Um, I'm I'm ready for them to return to the limelight rather than like the. You know, like, they've been like cast into the shadows because people didn't absolutely love Andromeda. Yeah, and Inquisition. As or, I as I've been saying now for well over a year, like uh, Dragon Age Anthem. Four will be their next game, and if they don't, if they don't, if if they don't do well in that game, there will be there will not be a Mass Effect. Like this Dragon Age Four is Bioware's last chance. Like the fact that they're still going under EA under multiple like failures oh yeah after like anthem <laughs> yeah like uh, uh, like don't please bioware don't. i want to see you make kotor 3 yeah yeah i want it i want it uh, and then also we got the uh i, I want to shout out the gameplay trailer for back for blood which is wow mm. Mm. i'm seeing some good i i'm not looking into it too much because i'm basically sold on it but the very little i did watch looks just scrumptious Mm. Delicious. I, 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 uh, <laughs> I'm interested to learn more about the characters because the characters do kind of look a little like plain and generic. Where, uh, like Left for Dead, like they weren't like flamboyantly stylized characters or anything, but they each kind of had like a pretty like individualized look. Where these just looked more like people, you know, with gear kind of thing. But mm. I'm excited. I'm sure there's still people. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> well, I was hoping. You might be right. Uh, did you guys have any other thoughts on the Game Awards? They were a thing. Honestly, honestly, I forget most of what I watched mm, you know, yeah. a couple weeks ago now. Uh, I don't remember anything really jumping out at me as being like, holy shit. Besides, I'm being like, Mass Effect exists still. Yeah. I'm like, all right, well, that's good. But uh, I don't remember them really announcing any games that I was like, oh, my God. So I think that's kind of the, that's kind of what I miss, what I'm, you know, with all the digital things. Like, I miss a, a big hype event, which is why I think, like, E3 and shit still needs to be a thing. Mm -hmm. Because when you can just release a trailer anytime, like, yeah, it's kind of cool to be surprised that this thing came out of nowhere. But I like a platform to announce this kind of shit and um uh, i don't remember the last time i actually sat and watched the game awards i always just go oh yeah that was just that just happened right and then i sk yeah. skim yeah. it what yeah. all was announced what all did they show yeah i don't I, I i barely even checked to see if uh well i was at work this time but like i was able to check like i think right after it ended but it's you know it's well, i don't really care who won but it's nice to know yeah, it's fun right. if you do like a watch party. And I hung out with uh, with Blink and uh, some of his friends, and it was a lot of fun just chatting and making jokes and stuff. Yeah, see that that would be cool. Like I I met, I last one I watched I watched at a friend's house, and that's definitely how we did. This kind of like, or even if you're not doing a watch party, I remember it was E3 two years ago where we were like just mess. Or no, it was this year. We were like messaging as shit was going like while well, they're doing the presentations and that made it more enjoyable than just like talking about it later talking about it in the moment and i think that's what i like about e3 is the big stage where they're like here's the holy shit moment and you're like holy shit you're right or oh if it, they thought that that would matter yeah. embarrassing yeah i like the embarrassments just just as much as the holy shit moments so yeah nothing you know, they usually have like a big a big bomb to drop it and i didn't feel the big bomb drop in this one it was just kind of okay fact man yeah but like show something <laughs> i'm just saying <laughs> that's like yeah that's like final fantasy 7 remake like, part 2 i could have put that line at the end of uh andromeda like the the james bond movies where james bond will return you're like oh yeah, of course he will just like Mass Effect will still happen. That's basically the the same effect I got from it. So, 
Just saying, I'm stoked. Don't don't get that misconstrued because I'm all about the Mass Effect. So, mm -hmm. I don't know. I, don't know. Oh, I will say, uh, Among really? Us had no place at the Game Awards because the Among Us was not released this year. <laughs> what? Was Among it? Us. Are you sure? Yeah, it was released two years ago. Was it? Just no one yeah. gave a shit until yeah, this year? Gave a shit until people started, a few streamers started streaming it. <laughs> That's yeah, funny to me. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> award shows. I don't really give a shit. I just like the Oscars. I just wait till the next day when the I wake Oscars up in the morning. I just look it up to see who won, and I'm like, all right, whatever. Well, they, well, they snub the shit out of like anything that's a franchise or anything. Anyway, they go just go for like the artsy shit, and you're like, okay, cool. That movie of the year is a movie I've never heard of, and probably yeah. I'm only hearing about it because it won well, I mean, the for, best for me, picture. it's like it's subjective. So everyone's opinion is going to be different on the matter. I don't really give a crap what a group of old farts think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, that together, being said, this shit. but that being said, I'm hoping all our viewers and listeners are like waiting with bated breath on what these old farts pick for their games. Because we're the real deal. We the are the truth. Legitness. So <laughs> I hope everyone is just. Biting their nails, not too. Don't bite them too short. Then yeah. they'll start to hurt. But you're welcome for that segue, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, well, let's uh let's get right to it then. Uh, top top five games of 2020 on the Game Tense Podcast here with these jamokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, they call me a dago. <laughs> right, well, let's let's start with Chris. You got any? Uh, you got any? My, you played? Yeah. Start with actually, our number, number five pick. Number five. You guys are lucky that I've actually played five new games this year. <laughs> <laughs> um, I picked for my number five, uh, Man Eater. Man Eater. It's yeah, simple. It. It's to the point. It's not right. super long. I it's easy this. to pick up and play. And it's fun. Yeah. It's Agreed. entertaining as hell, and I can't complain. That's all I want when I play a game is to have a good time, and uh, right. it's it's great. I I enjoyed thoroughly. First game I've ever platinumed. <laughs> First game platinum. First game I've ever gotten every single achievement in. Because usually I don't give a crap. I'm just like I just want to play through the game. I don't, I'm not going every, after everything. Every while I get that bug up my ass. Where I'm like, you know what? Well, try. Yeah. It's not many. I've tried. No, I don't, believe me, I have tried a few times, and I usually give up. Yeah, same. like I like I said, I was going to do that with God of War, the the new God of War game that came out a couple years ago. No, I yeah. am not no hunting down each and every one of these mfing ravens. Yeah, no, <laughs> I did everything else. I was just like, I'm not doing that. No, I, I gave did up. all. Screw those oh, Valkyries. There's still time. <laughs> oh, the Valkyries. The Valkyries it's, are the it's, it's been. Uh, removed from my ps4 so it's the Val happen. the valkyries are the true bosses of that game yeah and i, <laughs> and I did off. three of them and i was like i am not doing anymore oh, they, they range from like ridiculously easy to like holy shit pretty good like perfect full combo them or your toast it's actually yeah. one of my favorite parts because they're done so well yeah i really i'm not complaining at all they were the real boss like it was like a surprise boss as a side thing because you know side shit always feels like side shit that felt like it could have been main, like forced into the story, and but yeah, especially that last one. But anyway, Manhunter. Hell yeah, <laughs> yeah, Manhunter. I, I I also play it. It's a uh, I don't know if we're doing honorable honorable mentions, but it's one of my honorable mentions as well. Yeah, there you go. You get to play a shark from birth to death, basically, watching him become a megalodon, basically. <laughs> and not just and, and not just your death; it's to multiple deaths. Yes, multiple. Um, dozens. I love leveling it up and getting the different armor sets and taking all the different challenges and finding all the little Easter eggy things that were underwater, like finding SpongeBob's pineapple house and finding Pennywise in a in a sewer underwater. Yeah, that was there was. <laughs> yeah, you find, a lot you, of find you find the uh, the portal from Pacific Rim. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's like really funny and clever, and the narration by Chris Parnell is hysterically funny. Yeah, and, and the uh, game would not—I don't think the game would have been nearly as entertaining if that was missing. Yeah, it needs Parns. He, yeah, he yeah. was pretty good. The boss fights were fun. Is, he can he does snark like no other, and and like the the no notoriety levels that you go up mm -hmm. was like 
ridiculous because like i remember the beginning of the game i just i went up through the ranks like really fast because you know if you like do start so taking much, out the hunters right yeah start taking out the hunters and people in the boats and once you take them out you like alert the next one after a while yeah i i went up like seven of like the whatever 10 <laughs> i think i did the exact same thing and I was, <laughs> you know, I probably spaced this out a little bit <laughs> yeah, and then i got i got to the one where i like you know, I was like, oh, man, I might need to level up a little bit. This guy seems a little bit, a little bit tough. When they started having like Tesla coil things blocking, <laughs> I was like, all right, maybe, uh, maybe I need some abilities. So, but as a guy who was deathly afraid of the ocean, specifically because of sharks, because Jaws effed me up as a kid, yeah. that I love a game that's you play as a shark says something. So. And you got yes. new reasons to be scared shitless of this. Yes, because <laughs> it's going to have... Probably that, shark, that shark might have bone armor. You just don't know. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> but you that's might my... Jump, I, I, you're, you don't even like being within a couple blocks of the water. He might jump out of the water and bounce... I'm not going near that me. beach because I saw those bitches flopping around. No, <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Oh, excellent game. Yeah, it was a. It was kind of just an out of nowhere game that. Yeah, we yeah. both picked up around the same time, and mine just took a little while to show up. But uh, <laughs> yeah, excellent game. I definitely recommend everyone check that one out. It yeah, was. It's, it's a lot of fun. It's cheese. It's like a. It's like a B movie in video game form. And it was a good palate cleanser because there's nothing really else that much like it. Maybe like the Jaws Unleashed games and that and kind how of. How long stuff. ago was that? <laughs> yeah, but that. But even then, it was like their night and day different yeah. game so yeah it was a good palate cleanser like something totally new this year i'd say it's the most original yeah game came out of nowhere and surprised me absolutely yeah. all right i was expecting it to just kind of be this game where i'd be like eh whatever no i played through it in like four days <laughs> <laughs> right on well church what you got all right so my number five is one of two games that i think are severely underrated on this list and my evidence is on how many people on this podcast have played this game. Uh, I think, uh, well, I'll just get to it. Uh, 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim, which this could be basically my, my two through five on this list could be kind of in any order. And I wouldn't be upset because these games are all amazing. 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim is the latest release by Vanillaware. It's very different from all their other games. And it is, in my opinion, their best game yet. Like this game is incredible and it, 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 it's hard to really effectively describe it, or at least I have a difficult time describing it. Some people want to say, uh, I've heard some people say like it, the game's like half visual novel, half strategy game. Well, the, the, the visual novel part, I, I, I think that's a bad descriptor. I think it'd be more adventure um, kind of like point and click adventure games, like walking dead think life is strange where you can walk around you interact with people sometimes you interact with objects um and then the other half of the game is a, a simulated uh, like strategy game where you're dealing with the 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 big threat and the the story like it entirely the story and the characters is, is the best part about this game it's so unique. Uh, there's like time travel, time manipulation, alien invasion, mecha, drama, romance, horror. Like it has everything, everything. It, it's so good. So yeah. good. I got it on order. So hopefully. Uh, well, I, I wouldn't have bought it if you didn't start talking about it. So Cause, I, cause I knew nothing paper, about it. On paper, it sounds like something I wouldn't, you wouldn't. I wouldn't care about, but actually seeing it, like I, I was paying attention when it came out, even though I heard these things about it. It just was on my like, I'm gonna wait till later because I've got a lot of shit on order. Yeah, and, so and if this was anything, I would have saw. And it's unfortunate that things pan out this way. But if it didn't have that Vanillaware attached to it, like I might have just overlooked it. But I was like, Vanillaware game, absolutely, I'm playing it, and I blew me away blew me away like i'm still thinking about the game months later because it's so 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 good like the way my brain works is i see the title and you know you got 13 or uh, was it ages 13, like 13 sentinels ages rim i see something like that and i automatically think it's a sequel to something and i'm like well if i haven't gotten the first one already i'm probably not going to pick this one up so i was just kind of like eh. and then yeah. you said it was vanillaware in one of your videos and i was like oh 
now that I should get oh, that. Yeah. that. I think it was on the podcast oh, actually. Oh. Yeah, might have been on the last episode of the podcast or maybe two. Yeah, I got that a pretty good deal on Black Friday. It's been a while. Excellent. Uh, So yeah, please, more people check out Thirteen Sentinels because it is severely underrated. I will say I did really appreciate the fact that it was included at the Game Awards under Best Narrative, which for that category, I for what it went up against, it went up against The Last of Us, went up against. Final Fantasy VII. Um, I can't remember what other games are on that, but actually for that Man Eater. that uh, that award at the Game Awards, I did vote for 13 Sentinels for Best Narrative. Um, yeah. So, uh, Jason, what is your number five? My number five is something that someone, most people probably expected to be a higher up, but it's uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah. I liked it. Okay, well, yeah. fantastic. We talked pretty extensively on it about on the podcast, and I think both podcasts. But uh, yeah, you, you talked about it. An excellently, <laughs> an excellently uh, open world, uh, open samurai game, and uh, it's yeah. it did not disappoint. It was everything I wanted it to be. Uh, the excessive amount of collectibles are probably the only thing I can say I was a little bit over. They they. <laughs> They, te- they teetered on that uh, that Ubi, Ubisoft level, but they didn't go as yeah. Ubi stupid, where it's just like just collect these things just cause for no. Yeah. They actually they had they had a purpose, which was good, but it was like some was of them good. didn't. Some of them didn't have a purpose. Yeah, and that's the one that there was more of than there needed to be. Uh, you know, extending your life and stuff like that was fine, and finding new gear was fine. But yeah, thankfully it doesn't make you go- do all of them to get. The trophies, so I managed to platinum it. It was a fun platinum. Uh, like I said, we've talked extensively about it, so check out those episodes if you want to hear more of our thoughts on it. Excellent game. Yeah, hell yeah. What do you uh, What do you got next, Chris? Oh, I think I know one of you has played it. I don't know if the other guy has, Ooh. but mine is uh, Iron Man VR. Ah, hell, <laughs> hell yeah! That's probably my VR game of the year. Yeah. Um, I was kind of weary of this when I heard it was coming out and then I downloaded the demo of it and I had a boner for about two hours afterwards. I had an um, iron boner since they announced it. Damn right. <laughs> You'd be walking around the house going ting, ting, ting. <laughs> it's ta- technically it's titanium, but they say it's iron. I don't know why. That's but funny. like <laughs> one thing I don't think happens enough in VR games is like trying to make you really feel like you're in the environment that you're experiencing and like blood and truth did that really well. Yeah. This makes you feel like you are goddamn iron man. All the things you have to do to make the game work, like flying, you have to put your hands behind you to fly and all around you to make you center. And the hand movements are the exact same that you see in the movies for the firing of things and the rockets and all that stuff. And it's just, it makes you feel like you are iron man. And yeah. And I did not want it to end. (laughs) <laughs> it could it could have uh, it could have failed spectacularly because yeah. of all the stuff they if, were attempting, but they actually yeah. pull it all off. If and the controls all... did not work as well as they did, it would have been a massive you show, know, show. Yeah. effing in the A, yeah. yeah. But they they pulled it off. What's her name? Camouflage pulled it off. I can't wait to see what they do next. I mean, it was just I I talk that game's praises in every it's, everywhere. Everyone I I've talked so many people into buying it because of that. And it's not very often that uh, the main character of the game literally congr- congratulates you on beating the game. So that was pretty fucking sad. Yeah. <laughs> when Iron Man's like, good job. I'm like, thanks, Iron Man. Thanks, it wasn't Tony. Robert, fist bump, it was, bro. It wasn't Robert Downey, but, you know. <laughs> oh, I wish we could have done a virtual <laughs> fist bump in the game. That would have been cool. No. Uh, uh, but, yeah, it's super It's super fun. It controls extremely well. The story's really cool. It involves characters from the Marvel Universe. Yeah, and it doesn't um, it doesn't use overused ones like yeah. So that was kind of cool. I really hope they do a, a sequel. To I do like, too. I really like hope the they do. Mandarin and you know, I cannot like, maybe wait. Bring but out the is, rogues gallery. It's just super fun. Like I kind of want to play through it again now that I'm talking about it. Yeah. So well, church, what you got next for us, pal? Yeah. So like I said, my my two through five can be. 
can be mixed up. So it's like I had a really hard time placing these. But nobody will be surprised time, with my picks. Time to cement it. Number it's four. Definitely, definitely number four, and it stays in number four. four. One of the best games of 2020, Final Fantasy VII Remake. I'll be over here. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> and i cannot cannot wait for the rest of this game the rest of this i i, I love final fantasy 7 one of my favorite games of all time i'm very like cautiously optimistic about this game it took so long and i think they absolutely nailed it for those who, who want to play like a very a bridge we're just gonna hit the main story beats you still have the original Final Fantasy VII. If you want a fully fleshed out world, you want to know all about the characters, Final Fantasy VII Remake. It's like an HD extended cut with like a remix. Uh, wicked, no. wicked, wicked. So good. And you know what? I, I will say I'm not a fan of the combat system at all. Didn't ruin the game for me. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's not bad. The, so the, the classic then. That system is not bad. Classic is not like traditional turn based, which is what I wish it would have been. Just let me do the turn based, uh, but it works. Um, you want to play that? Play Final Fantasy VII. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I wish you could do do both, but um, it, it it builds on the legacy, but it doesn't step on the legacy. Yeah. If you want, it, you like. I would say the Resident Evil Two remake was so good. That I don't feel the need to ever play the original fun, uh, Resident Evil 2 again. Exactly. But this one is so good that you're like, oh. I probably won't ever play original. I can't see myself playing original at this point. Unless, like, if I want to just, like, quickly relive the experience, I could just watch a video. Like, yeah. eh, that's how. That's kind of how I feel. Yeah. So there you go. But if you want the old combat system, they didn't delete Final Fantasy VII from existence. You can still right. play it. So this is a good way to look at it. But for, I know there's a lot of folks that are like, you know, what? I'm going to hold out until the whole series of Fall Fantasy VII is available. Yeah, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hate. Just, just uh, they're just missing out. That's all. It's uh, that's on them. Whatever what they th th they think they're doing themselves a service, but they're actually doing themselves a disservice. You know what? That's their choice. But yep. by the time finally, uh, you don't like what's wrong. You don't like fun. Okay, that's cool. Wait, yeah. wait for more fun. By the time it finally does come out with the full game, it's like okay, well jump into it definitely but just realize at that time it's probably going to be like eight years well it's going to be like a 150 hour game or something yeah. yeah i put uh i put something like 85 into this one so I, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a chunky boy and that's it's okay because this game is it can be amazing incredible Final Fantasy 7 remake do play it but anyone thinking that it's not not its own game. It feels like a full game. You feel like you're getting a full game story, but then it continues. Yeah, it doesn't. It, it, it's the next it, one's not going to feel like the part two. It's going to feel like number two, like the sequel. It's going to yeah. feel like the sequel it, to this game. The game they leave you off in a good place. That's like okay, we got a conclusion for this story. Like it, they yeah, the, master, the way masterfully done. So, uh, Jason, what's your number four? Spider Man. Miles Morales. Nice. I love Spider Man. Sorry to just drop that bomb on you guys like that, but I love Spider Man. Who knew? I'm out. I love Spider Man. I'm proud. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is just as good mechanically as Spider Man on PS4 from 2018 or 2017 or whatever the hell it came out. Uh, the story is. Just as well told, but I do like the last one story just a little bit more. But that being said, with the addition of Miles' other spider powers, they fit so perfectly into this game, and they've streamlined the things that I didn't like so much about the last one and made it basically perfect. The side stuff, you can just knock it all out fast. You don't have to swing around using your like spider sense sonar to be like, okay, hey, where's the last street crime in this district? Yeah. Just bring it to me. All right. You can just go to it, do it. There's not an, such an egregious amount of them as there felt like in the last one. Uh, screwball. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No screwball, which is Thank a you. massive plus. 
Um, yeah, I loved everything about this game. Um, it was shorter, but uh, I still felt like a full experience. So I'm, I'm glad. Um, I'm just looking forward to Spider-Man 2 that much more. And I hope it doesn't keep us waiting very long. I want it back. Can I have it tomorrow? I, I'd actually just like it tomorrow. But uh, <laughs> it is cool that the extra powers, it kind of... Uh, man, I don't know what. Like Marvel like shot itself in the dick being like, oh, there's another Spider-Man, and he's got like the same powers, and then some more. So <laughs> it's just like... Riddle way, cap style. Way, way to one-up your top... Uh, your top hero there, Marvel, but okay. But yeah, uh, check it out if you haven't. If you haven't, what's your problem? I know you guys haven't. What's your problem? It's basically, I will. I'm get it eventually. I'm I'll directly get- singing what's your guys' problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, I indirectly said it, but then I felt like I needed to really step on it there. <laughs> Miles so, so good. It's a lot of fun. All right, Chris, what's your number three? My number three is the game I'm currently playing. Oh! And I'm not done with it yet, but I'm pretty close according to Church. Mm, Getting there. Ish. Close-ish. Nice. It's 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 subjective in my game. 2077, man. It's, it's, yeah, it's it's subjective. You could, uh... Yeah. you You could beeline for the exit, or you can just keep going. There's a... There's a whole lot of... There's a whole lot to do in that game. Yeah. yeah. I didn't I know I think I think some people thought I just like went through it the quickest way possible, but I yeah. I really I really uh, I really did a lot of the side shit during my time with it and I just didn't want to a hundred percent the game because I do have my collector's edition, as we know, in my pile of loot where the dragon is in uh across the border. So I was like, I'm gonna get my full experience. With it, I got enough to... I thought we were going to have a podcast really close to the release, so I was like, well, I got to play it a little bit, so that's why I bought it on the PS4. And then some lazy bastard didn't want to talk to me, so we didn't do one until today. So I could have I could have played even more. So and should I, I not... I have went back to should it. I not elaborate then? Well, we'll talk more about Cyberpunk here in a little bit. Okay, so yeah. just know Cyberpunk 2077 is not a disaster. Yeah. Depends Unless you're playing it on a standard Xbox One or PS4. But it is my number three. And just wait. Patient. Now I'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. Son. All right. Church. All right. Uh, uh, yeah, so no surprise. Uh, I don't really need to say much about this, but my number three is The Last of Us Part Two. No one's heard of that game, so yeah. moving on. Like, ugh, ugh. what? Another um, game we talked extensively about. Yeah. We talked a lot about it. You can go back to those episodes if you want to hear in-depth thoughts about it and rantings about my disagreements with the general masses and their complaints. But um, if you haven't played The Last of Us 1, what? what, Why? Why are you doing this to you? If you haven't played The Last of Us 2, don't look at the If you haven't Mm -hmm. played the first one, it's self-harm at this point. Yeah. Like, (laughs) Last of Us Part 1, or Last of Us... That is so 2013. Last games ever made, ever. And Last of Us Two is right there with it. Fantastic sequel. Last of Us Two. Yeah, Jason, what's your number four? Number three. Doom Eternal, bastards. Yeah. What you know about that Doom Eternal? I know all about that Doom Eternal. Bastards. We all do. You know why? Because it's worth knowing all about. Not only did I end up just buying a standard edition because Amazon fucked me over with my pre-order of the collector's edition. I mean, you didn't get your controller stickers? And then I uh, played the shit out of it, beat it, and then I happened to just be perusing the Amazon, and what did I find? Like, an almost... I think it was like 40% off instead of like the jacked up prices that they were going for, even at that time. So when I, oh, it's in a damaged box. And so I'm like, ah, oh, you know what? I really just want the helmet. So as long as the helmet's good, we're good. <laughs> and then I get it, and it's in an absolute mint condition. So huge score for me. So they did me dirty and then inadvertently made up for it by listing primo stuff as damaged goods. So 
One man's junk is another man's treasure, and I double dipped on that bastard, and I do not regret it, except for the fact that I beat it on Xbox, and the collector's edition comes with the season pass for PS4. So now I got to beat it all, and then I got to, and then I got to beat the the new stuff. So I'm sure I could probably just jump in with that, but it would feel dirty. So I'm gonna do it again because uh, I need to be draped in gore once again. <laughs> As always, always. Who doesn't love being draped in gore? All right. Mm. What you got, Chris? What's the next well, one? My number two is. Two. Yes. <laughs> oh hell yeah. Uh yeah, Doom Eternal. I love the one that came before this, but I felt this just completely in every way brought it to another level. Some people I did the, not uh... think that the platforming would work. Yeah. I still heard that they're adding that kind of stuff into it, but it does. Yeah, it's like so yeah. good. It's, it's, like it's challenging. I'll give it that. It's challenging, but it's fun. There's a couple of frustrating parts like that. Yeah, there's a couple the parts end. where that you have to like thrust yourself over those long open gaps and try to collect, grab onto something. But what? thrusting yourself at gaps, gaps. and grabbing gaps. onto something <laughs> dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Um, player, more like it, but it <laughs> added in all the customization stuff and like gave it kind of almost an RPG type feel. And it's just, it, it's not like my the thing I keep saying to people that have, have complained about this is I don't want to keep playing the exact same game over and over again. Not I want there to be that. new things added each time to continue to make me want to play it. Yeah, and that did it the right way for me. But I'm glad they didn't get rid of like a guts shower because who doesn't? No, no. I mean, like it's still Doom. It still feels like Doom. It looks like Doom. It's, it definitely sounds like Doom. Because <laughs> that yeah, music I, just. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think one of these things, the, the the one of the most humorous complaints about the game for me is what Doom is now, what Doom 2016 is, mm -hmm. and then kind of amping that up. People are like, it's too fast paced. Uh, have you not played any Doom game ever? Yeah. Like, I used to be able to just use a gun and just use it the whole level and kill everything with it. Now I have to switch between guns. It's like, oh no. For once, for once they actually made a, a, a first person shooter with a viable system that encur encourages you and makes you use all well, your. It's also experimentation and all these other things that you can be using on top of the guns and when to use the, the glory kills to your advantage and all that kind of shit. And, when it's a good chance to use the, the chainsaw or whatever. Like a beautiful uh, murder. Yeah, it's almost kind of puzzle-esque at times, the way that you have to take out like a room full of baddies. Like, I was having problems for three straight days, and I used to complain about this to Jason all the time, and he was like, take out the guy that's the generator. The generator. First. I was like, yeah. oh. <laughs> yeah. I was, that, I was oh. I was, I was happy to be your uh, Nintendo Hot Tips hotline there. Yeah, basically. Not J one nine hundred. Jason knows it. Yeah, but uh, one one thing that uh, is definitely awesome that not enough games do anymore is it lets you have the whole array of guns. Mm -hmm. Whereas a lot of shooters now they're like choose a sidearm, choose a main gun. That's what you get. Yeah, and you're like bullshit. No, I you have them. all of them at your disposal at all times. I don't care if my guy is carrying 90 guns at, him, at a time. Yeah. Speaking of cyberpunk, that was me at most times. I'm like, yeah. huh, I'm over encumbered. I don't even think why, I'm yeah. anything why up. Can't, why can't I walk? Look, look <laughs> at my inventory. Oh, it's because I have 88 guns. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll drop. Uh, I'll disassemble two. Okay, there we go. Now I'm good. I'm, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Amazing. But also, probably some of the best end level boss fights ever yeah in doom eternal the, that final boss fight that two-parter was fucking insane awesome. they, they built on anything they built in 2016 it that. did it it did it better. i don't i don't know how they can go bigger it. honestly they're almost setting themselves up to hopefully not fail yeah. but how like, are they gonna top that for part three yeah so i don't know but the best right, part of the best try. part of owning this game is the controller stickers. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> that that will, not that, will, that will remain on the sheet for, yeah, yes. for, for all time. <laughs> it's like all my other ones, like my Final <laughs> Fantasy 15 ones and whatever other 
<laughs> array of ones I have. I'm like All sitting right. there thinking I'm gonna get something epic in here because of the Amazon edition, and oh, that's what it is. Eat my ass. Epic stickers. Yeah, that's pretty cool. At least give me the goddamn soundtrack code, yes, some of a bitch. Church. <laughs> what you got, bro? Uh, yeah. So my number two, and I'm just feeling really, really confident about this right now. Could be recency bias. That's always the thing I'm always worried about because I tend. That's how it seems like every year. The the you forgot one, about Doom, didn't he? You forgot the last game I played. Yeah. Oh, I didn't forget <laughs> about Doom. Uh, one of the it always seems like one of the last games I played of the year always makes it really high in my list, and that's why I'm always concerned about recency bias. But I will say uh, for the fact that I picked Cyberpunk 2077 as my number two. And that I am playing through the game a second time immediately after finishing it the first time. Thanks, I say. I, I, it makes me think I, I really did enjoy it. And we'll, we'll, like I said, we'll do some. I want to do more cyberpunk discussion, kind of on its own. So we'll talk about it a little bit more. Absolutely. Here. But I love Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. You're not alone. Uh, I Jason. think that's three are alone, but uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You are not alone. I have also picked it as my number two. And we'll discuss it later. But it is not number two. But number you, know, you know what else is not number two? Number one. Chris, what you got? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my number one should probably be obvious. Oh. Last of Us Part Two. Heck yeah. Um, I think mostly because of the way it fucked with my expectations of the way things were going in it. Um, I've always said that Naughty Dog is like the best when it comes to storytelling and character development. Absolutely. And I could, I, I, I was late to the game. I didn't get it right away. I picked it up. I want to say maybe two or three months after it came out. So I've been hearing all these stories of people hating on it and review bombing it and complaining about, Something that happened during the halfway point, but I didn't know what it was because I tried to stay spoiler free. And then when I got to that point in the game, I was like, yeah, this is fucked up. Why are you making me play as this person? And then they're like, let us show you. And then it's like, <laughs> let me show you the game from her point of view. Yes. And I was like, oh, I don't hate this person. She's actually not the villain they're making her out to be. Yeah, she does something horrible to a character that we love, but was her reasoning... Justified? I think so. Well, hold um, and then by the... I was talking to Church about this a little bit. There's a point where you think that Ellie's the hero of the game, but there's a point where they make you think she's the villain. There's a point where your feelings on her change completely, and you think that she's the bad guy. I mean, she comes off as the bad guy, and that was where I was like, I love this fucking game. Because it messed with all my expectations, and then when the ending happens and the two of them have to fight, now it's just kind of like, don't make me do this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to do this. Yeah. I don't want to see one of these people go. Right. I was like, I don't want, no, I do not want to participate. And I actually had to put the controller down. I paused it and walked away from it for a little while. Cause I'm like, I don't want to do this right now. I really don't. I like these two characters too much. And that was when I realized that was, that's one of the best games I think I've ever played is that it made me think like that. <laughs> so yes, Abby is awesome. She quit complaining. You whiny bitches. Yeah. Uh, Laura Bailey did. She is her. fantastic. Superb. And just and then also the you know, graphics are great, the music is great, the voice acting is amazing as usual. I, I think the, the attention to details was yeah. really, really I, impressed me about that game. I want to know exactly how long it took for them to develop that because that is just it was it went beyond my expectations of what the game was going to be in every aspect, everyone. Mm. And the ending, I mm. man, like I, I've said it in my streams and my videos and stuff that it takes a lot for me to get so emotionally like involved in the game that I'll like get emotional at some point. And the last thing that Joel says, like the, the last thing that happens in the game, like I fucking bawled like a little kid. Like someone just took away my favorite toy. <laughs> I was, Oh, <laughs> so yeah. You're an adult. Just buy another toy. Come on. <laughs> no shame. No shame. No shame. Right on. So yeah, my favorite game of one of my favorite games of all time on top of my favorite game of 2020. Nice. Nice. What about you? Do we even need to ask you, or are we just going to skip right to me? It should be. It sh <laughs> yeah, if anybody has been following me in any, in any form, social media, or through the podcast, you should know this. I hope you do. Like, <laughs> I hope you respect me enough to know 
<laughs> what this should be. Uh, and then <laughs> Half-Life Alex, which please, 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 anybody, if you have a friend that has an Oculus that you can borrow it or some way. like Is that how you played it? Yes. The okay. Quest 2 is super affordable. Just get the Quest 2 and play it. Because I that's tend simple. to get the Quest 2. That's like one of the next big purchases I'll be making. Uh, I think you'd still need a PC with the Quest 2 for Alex. I'm not sure. I, I, I Actually, I should look that up so I can sell people on this game more. But uh, it is, I mean, I know there's a lot of folks out there that haven't played Valve games, which is unfortunate. Because every time Valve puts out a game... It, it, it becomes a flagship of that genre. They, 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 Valve isn't the game that's making games necessarily for profit. They can stew and simmer and innovate and experiment. And Half Life Alex is when people say, I want that VR game that's like a true game experience that puts me in, in a world. Uh, I mean, people mention there's a lot of games that get mentioned. I know you guys mentioned Blood and Truth, like that's a big step to really solidify in like VR as another experience, not just these gimmicky tech tech demos that a lot of VR games are, Yeah, which there, you know, there's a lot that can be done still experimenting and innovating, but half-life Alex is so masterfully well-made. They put you in this world that just looks real, looks believable. Uh, the interaction, um, their physics like valves are always known for their physics and you wouldn't think that oh just implementing cool physics in a vr game is really going to elevate something as much as it is but you mm. then come to realize uh how important like just the concept of physics is in our everyday lives and oh, yeah physics make or break a game it's everything like really yeah. and uh and then to top that off to bring in the next segment of the half-life story is amazing because a, a lot of people when they first saw this were like well we want half-life 3 they're giving us this thing and it's like this is is not half-life 3 but by the end of the game it's like half-life 3 confirmed <laughs> you better believe it half-life 3 confirmed now if if it's going to take another 10 15 years before we get half-life 3 i don't know but i guarantee this this just goes to tell you that when Half Life Half Life Three finally comes out, it's gonna well hopefully because everyone's like how are the, you know there's so much expectation even in this, but oh my god Half Life Alex, so good play it play it please do what you can play it let me let me borrow your borrowed Oculus <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and and we've we've all shared the sentiment that uh, I believe that. VR, you can look at videos, you can have people tell you about it. You really you need to experience yeah, it. Like there's reason yeah, why we have a VR of spotlight on our on our podcast. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So Half-Life Alex, my game of the year. Uh Jason, what is your game of the year? Uh, Final Fantasy VII remake. Hell yeah. So good. So good. Loved it. Um I loved it almost too much. It was uh, not too much. Now it comes to seven. It was so good. Like uh, just absolutely beautiful. I don't care how long it takes them. As much as I want to play it right now, this is proof that making people wait is a good thing and not giving in to peer pressure. Like what seems to be a, a major problem with cyberpunk with, for a lot of people is that they were like, give it to us now. And they're like, it's not ready. We want it now. They're like, okay. Well, imagine doing that at a restaurant. <laughs> you're gonna get. You're gonna get salmonella. <laughs> you're gonna get underwhelmed. And you're gonna get. You're gonna be pretty shitty feeling. Uh, so I'm glad that they waited till this was absolutely perfect. Uh, no complaints. I don't. I can't think of one complaint about this game. I loved every bit of it, to the point that I was just. I I almost did what you did with Cyberpunk. I almost went right back through it and. Played it again. Um, I got the collector's edition as you did, and this uh, ended up being the most costly game of the year for me because not just because I bought the collector's edition, but because then I wanted to buy all the other characters. Uh, thankfully, I guess Square Enix 
inadvertently talked some sense into me and uh, canceled my order because I ordered them like right when I finished this game. And for some reason, uh, my, my PayPal thing didn't uh, didn't work out. It's like, oh, no, we can't accept payment. I'm like, can I just re? Can you send me a thing where I redo the payment? Because I don't really want to reorder. They're like, oh, just reorder. And they canceled my order. I was like, wow, really? Uh, you're really trying to make the sale here. Okay. That's the closest thing I have to a complaint on this game that I had to tell a side story. That's not even actually related to the game. That's the closest related complaint I have to this game. <laughs> so Square Enix is a store customer services ship, but this game is a fucking masterpiece. Absolutely. And for uh, for honorable mentions, Man Eater was one, as we said. I'm also going with uh, Daymare 1998, which... Uh, yeah, well, I really, I really enjoyed that. Compared to more, 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 more than Resident Evil Three. Okay. Yeah, I got the. I think I got the impression when you first talked about Daymare that you were you really liked it, but I didn't think I didn't get the impression that you liked it that much. I, I really liked it. It was a <laughs> surprise. Like I wasn't, I was expecting, you know, because it's like a, it's like an indie game basically. Mm. Um, I liked it more than Evil uh, Resident Evil Three. Uh, I, you know, taking in perspective what. Uh, you know, the budget and stuff was on it. Like, yeah, Resident Evil 3 had more in certain terms, but I, as far as the enjoyability, I really liked Daymare more. Like, mm-hmm. it lived up to my expectations more than 3. And, of course, the game that we all play whenever we can, Predator Hunting Grounds. It's Nothing's got me together with my bros so much this year. Is that game so special mention there for that? Yeah, that's that's one of my honorable mentions as well. And I got uh, this is bullshit mention because this came out literally the last day of 2019, so I can't include it in my list, but I really wanted to. And Thank you. Dra- Dragon Marks for Death came out on January 31st, 2019. I that's some it. bullshit. That's some bullshit. So it's no one could have played it for an, any amount of time <laughs> the, the day it came out to add it to their 2019 game of the year. And it technically isn't, isn't uh, eligible for this year, but if it was, it would be on my list somewhere. It was a excellent game. It's so good. I have a copy and I don't even have the system to play it. God, what? Hey, what? Get one. Why? Get a, yeah. And what do you guys got? Any runner-ups or honorable mentions? Yeah. Or? Other than other than Predator being one of mine, like the funny thing about that is that me and Jason were playing this like when it first came out for like what like three weeks, mm-hmm. and then yeah. just completely stopped. Well, my yeah. Well, didn't your your light your uh well gold run out? Yeah. Yeah. The. uh Whatever it's called, PS Plus. PS Plus, yeah, uh, yeah. It ran out. We we were taking a little bit of time, and then it turned into like life, stupid life <laughs> in the stupid way. I mean, like I could have continued to play it in the in the interim, but I didn't. I just didn't yeah. think it would be fun not playing with people. And then all of a sudden, Black Friday happens, and it's nine dollars, and everybody buys a copy of it. Now everyone wants to play it. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I just like my life's still getting in the way, so I haven't been able to play as much as I wanted to. But I've got. What, two and a half months left of my uh, PS Plus, about a three month one this time. So, mm-hmm. well, I mean, Josh, our, uh, Church and I were playing it just last night. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, with its rocket sauce. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, yeah, my other my uh-huh. other uh, runner up is Cobra Kai. Sweet. Uh, way better than it has any right to be. Completely. It's a beat em up, and you have to play through it twice to beat it. You have to play through it either as. The Cobra Kai Dojo or the Miyagi Do Dojo, and Sweet. each gets their own specific attacks and themed attacks and stuff like that. And it is a really, really fun beat 'em up. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably gonna pick it up right away here. I think they still have copies at our Walmart. Mm-hmm. If they do, I'll be I'll be snagging one because you sold me on it uh, on Enabler Bros. So damn right. Now that Christmas is over, uh, not that I ever stopped, but I'm gonna spend <laughs> money on me. I've been I've been going hard on action figures as well as games so i gotta get i gotta get myself in check a bit but i'm i'm still gonna buy stuff 
So, oh yeah, Cobra Kai is Yeah, on they that. even got the uh, the the voice actor or the actors from the show to come back and play their characters. Like it's weird hearing Ralph Macchio's voice coming out of a video game. Mm. Yeah. So. Right. And he sounds like he's 108. <laughs> but it's a it's just a very fun, simple, yet complicated. It's it's it feels old school, but it has a lot of modern day tendencies to it. It's 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 really it's just really well put together. It, it's like I said, it's better than it has any right to be for a licensed game like that. Perfect. All right, Church, you got uh, you got any? Yeah, honorable men- honorable mentions wouldn't be terribly surprising uh, games. Stuff like Hades, which I'll I'll talk a little bit about. Um, later, Hades, Doom Eternal, uh, Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, a lot of people are a lot more lukewarm on Resident Evil 3, but I really enjoyed the remake. I enjoyed it. Um, it was fine. It just felt like a step back after 2. Yeah. Um, I'm not I saying know. I hated it. I was just a little yeah. underwhelmed on it. I slapped in Mortal too Kombat short. Uh, 11 Aftermath just because I finally got to play Mortal Kombat 11. And that yeah. uh, oh, story was really good. Uh, was did I say good. Streets of Rage 4? No. Is that kind of, no. Streets of Rage 4 would be another. Yeah, Streets of Rage 4 is awesome. Um, Sweet. Yeah. A lot, of, a lot of good stuff this year. Like, what a what a great year. Shitty year, but a good year for games. Yeah. What, a, what about uh, games that you played or beat this year for, like, the first time that might not have come out this year? You guys got anything as far whole as bunch, that? A whole bunch right. of games. I got a couple. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Well, I got one that's a disappointment that didn't necessarily come out this year, and I'm I, I don't really ever say a games really a disappointment. I'm usually just like, oh, it's kind of underwhelmed. Like I said with Resident Evil Three, but this game is straight up disappointed me, and I, I think it's more because of how long it actually took to beat versus how much it cost, and I didn't enjoy it. And that's, Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necrodancer. Did you play Crypt of the Necrodancer? Because a lot of people think the answer was fantastic. No, I did not. Um, yeah, it's a rhythm. It's a rhythm-based Zelda game. So I said, in, as I said in my beat tweet, if this counts as a Zelda game, it's my least favorite Zelda game. Yeah, yeah it's it's cap, even lower than Wind Waker. Mm. <laughs> <gasps> I don't. Ah. I don't. I don't hate. I don't hate Wind Waker. So I'm just. I just had to throw that in there. <laughs> but. There is games that we obviously didn't get to play that came out this year. That some are pretty egregious. Uh, some just came out that I kind of kind of bums me out that I didn't get to get to. You guys got any of those that uh, are on was, your short short list that you're like, uh, uh, kinda, like you every game I've ever bought? <laughs> <laughs> Too many. Too many. <laughs> well, I got, I got these as my top three: um, Mortals, Phoenix Rising. Uh, been wanting to play that since I heard about it. Crash about four, it? Crash four. I wanted it, but I didn't want. I didn't eighty dollars want it. And uh, Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity. I'm hoping this is a better Zelda game. But uh, yeah, especially after hearing such good stuff about Crash, uh, it actually made it into. And uh, it was that and Immortals were uh, on sale, so I was super happy to pick up on those nice 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 all right so let's um real quick jump into the community question which i know it's been a little while but um in like what a month no uh, more than a month month and a half uh yeah. so the question was what are some hidden gems of the last gen uh and we did get a couple couple community question community answers so there thank you for that um so wreck it Renz says underappreciated game for the ps4 would have to be dusk diver uh, an action game that has some really nice visuals combat is fluid and fun and never feels repetitive well i'd have to agree because i have never heard of that game at all yeah what is this that, that, can you bring that by me one more time there i might have heard the name once dusk diver d-u-s-k Muff, Muff diver dusk diver oh okay. dusk till dawn what <laughs> yeah, like, from dusk. Cool. Um, and then Black Metal Gamer says White Knight is a true and uh, White Knight N I G H T, not like okay. So White Knight is a true secret treasure, fixed camera angle survivor survival horror set in the twenties. 
Uh, mm -hmm. So it's like a noir black and white comic book game with elements similar to Fatal Frame with ghosts. Okay, well, that's that's better than what I was thinking. I was like, White Nights when you you don't do stuff for a while and then you, you have a, a sexy dream. <laughs> oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry I'm late. I had a White Night last night. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we kind of talked about it uh, previously. Don't so. do it now. <laughs> so... Um, Community question for next week or next time, because it's not going to be next week. That I will guarantee you. Uh, community question for next time will be what is your game of the year pick? Let's know your thoughts. Yeah, I want to hear it. Because, you know, not everybody always plays the same games. Not everybody always plays like the AAA games. So there's lots of stuff. And not everyone would rank them the same even if you have played them exactly. and everyone's enjoyment is based on their experience you know like people don't have cyberpunk anywhere near their top 20 games this year because of their experience whereas i was unaffected and as most things if it doesn't affect me i don't care <laughs> <laughs> so it's 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 strange how that works isn't it yeah, i don't care i think it's a good game because i didn't experience this shit so it doesn't matter to me uh yeah so then uh, i thought for like usually we'll talk about like with the games we've been playing and i figured we'd start this out by talking about a little bit about cyberpunk a little bit about predator because we've all been playing that i think there's lots to be said yeah. uh so you guys glad you've joined us i'm glad you've joined us on predator well we've only been cyberbullying you since it came out, and we were playing it, and we we're like, "You like Predator? What are you doing, man?" Like, yeah, I yeah. like first person shooters on well, PlayStation. So, so my my <laughs> of course my big hang up with Predator is that it's a first person game, first person shooter. I don't play first person shooters on the console. Some sometimes. I, I hate playing first person shooters on the consoles. So I was waiting for it to come to Steam. Still, it's not on Steam. It's only available via Epic. I got <laughs> issues with Epic as is. So, uh, yeah, $10. Uh, I got it before Black Friday. I think it went on like $10, $10 sale, like beginning of November. Mm -hmm. Picked it up. Yeah, you guys pressured me into it. Yeah, we're the Super Bully Bros. It was, it was a light, it was a light push. It was just a, it was just a gentle, <laughs> a gentle shove. I thought, like, you know, I'll give it a shot. I could play it, play an online game with, with my homies. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, and I, I really like the, um, well, I liked Friday the 13th. Predator is made by the same people that made Friday the 13th, Ilphonic. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I wanted to play it. Been having fun. I wish I wish I could use a mouse and keyboard. We did try cross-play. Oh, yeah, we did. Had, wish you could use a controller better. <laughs> which cross-play apparently <laughs> is broken. Uh, it's been patched, so I, I've been tempted to, to, to give it a shot again. Awesome. Because... For the like few games that we did manage to get going in crossplay, like it was so much better of an experience for me. It's kind of like the accessibility thing. Like it'll make games accessible, and then I will have a lot better time. You're not handicapped. Just we, we learn to use. Just get get better. good, bro. Don't like you <laughs> get good, bro. I don't like it. Got gimpy, <laughs> he's got gimpy thumbs. It's not about it's not about getting good. It's about not liking it. Lieutenant, let, Lieutenant Dan. Got to bring your thumbstick skills up to plus 12, bruh. Do some thumb ups. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Well, yeah. Thanks for uh, straining our friendship and actually trying out a first person shooter on uh, <laughs> on console with us. We appreciate you taking that taking that shot. That wasn't underhanded. I'm, I actually mean, thank you for playing with us. So. I'm yeah, excited. and I'm I'm hoping we can get more like full party games going where we can like the five of us so we can all take turns being the predator. Yeah, that'd be nice to be able to play predator. Once Just don't let me play the predator because no, <laughs> it's luck of the draw. Like I can't even <laughs> find you guys. It sucks. <laughs> it's ultimate. It's it's grown up hide and seek. So <laughs> slaughter hide and seek. It's perfect. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just it's a super fun game. Like when you have a bunch of people that you know with you yeah. you can shit talk and whatever while you're playing it's sad that the people that we have been playing against who are playing as the predator who are not in our group don't get to hear 
the filth coming out of our mouths while we are being attacked by them. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, it's it it was surprising. I, I was already expecting to like it. I mean, as much as I wish it could be more like a Left for Dead style thing, like an actual like story driven, because we need a good story driven Predator game. It's well, that's where the months. little Arnold in the tapes that you find. I do like that. I do. Appre- I really appreciate that Arnold even came back to like voice the tapes and the football everything. player guy. I don't know where that came from. They did better than Mortal Kombat. <laughs> I don't know why Mortal Kombat could get Stallone, Peter Weller, and everyone, but get like the worst Arnold impersonator. Like me and you guys do better Arnold impressions than the guy who. Did Terminator in Mortal Kombat 11. Open up the door, there's a bomb in there. Yeah, like, come on. Come on, Kohagen. Give these people air. Give these people air. <laughs> come um, on. So, and I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that I'm awesome at, at our own impressions. I'm just... Put that cookie down, now! At, at who does the Terminator. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, go, moving on to Cyberpunk. Cyberpunk. Oh Everyone, my God. The game that is the, the lightning, lightning rod, rod of hate, hate for <laughs> 2020 is the game that we got to feel like I got to defend at all costs to everyone I talk to about it. I heard it's crap. Well, experience it and then tell me. Yeah. yeah uh, like, because, uh, the, the only complaint people can have about this game is yes, it should not have been released in the state. It was on the base PlayStation or on the PlayStation four or the Xbox one. If you got a pro, if you got a Series X, it runs just fine. They shouldn't have released. They should have waited. They should have put out the PC version so people could at least run it, work out some of the kinks, take nope. give it a couple more months, and then put it out on the consoles. No PC got to wait later, too. Yeah. Because uh, then be they at least would have been able to generate some revenue, which I, is part of the problem that they ran into and why they pushed it out when they did. Aside yeah. from that, the game is amazing. Oh, my yeah. God. It is. Not, it's it's one of the most captivating things uh, aside, well, showing whether it's on my list. Number two, uh, the only game that captivated me more was Final Fantasy VII this year. I really got into the world. I really bought into it. It was really cool. I, I experienced minimal problems, nothing. Yeah, nothing that game was more, breaking. That was more than like, huh, that was kind of funny. Yeah. Made me go, what the fuck? I have not uh, experienced anything that has affected the gameplay in any way. It's It's usually just some graphical thing. Yeah. yeah. The only problem I had, uh, we discussed, was that I can't finish one quest line. But with the patch that's out, it might even work now. It's not a huge. I have a story about that quest line, so it's not like I don't know anything. Our experience is nothing that took away from my experience. It's. Uh, I, I love the combat. I love the story. I love the world that they've built. Uh, all the different play style not, things that you have to do. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's, there's it, it, a variety to it without I, feeling shoehorned, like making me, oh, uh, you know, like Grand Theft Auto when they the little mini games they put in there, they just feel kind of like shoehorned in. Yeah, I, like I think organic. good comparison um, because CD Projekt Red, mostly well known for like the Witcher games, uh, in, in in comparison to The Witcher, I think I enjoy personally I enjoy Cyberpunk more. Uh, the first person shooting combat, even the melee. I feel is absolutely rock solid. But what if anybody has played the Witcher games, what you know is the absolute best part of the Witcher games is the story, especially when it comes to the side side quests, side stories, side characters. Like most games, they're just tossed aside. Here's fetch quest. Just go get this thing, bring it back. Go go over there, kill that thing. Where everything is so fleshed out in Cyberpunk's world, like uh there's so much oh oh my god (laughs) it's just so good like uh i i already told these guys but i'm enjoying the game so much is that when i finished it i pretty much did all all the side quests that had to deal with characters it does have some kind of like um the races races or the races were easy um my my favorite part is that you could tell her nah Miss me with that bullshit when she asked. I just, I just failed a quest Go. where I just, I refused to participate in the one with the, uh, uh, the religious guy that got released from prison. Oh, oh that's a good one. That's I, good I, one. I said no. I don't want to do it because I, I'm not. I'm. I was like no. Oh my god, that quest <laughs> crazy. 
I failed it. I failed it when I when the mother showed up. I was like, you know what? I'm out. And it says you have failed this mission. I was like, I'm fine with that. Oh man, <laughs> it's crazy. But um, yeah, it, 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 like that. Like when Jason told me that he's like, yeah, I beat the game already. And I was like, how many hours did you put in? He's like, like forty or something. I was like, huh? Yeah. I was I mean, like. He, he J, I don't know. Jason swears that he didn't. He didn't. He didn't skip it. I didn't, I, I didn't beeline it for anything. I did a lot. I did a lot. It took me I, about sixty. I, I, I explored, but I explored with purpose more than in other games where you're just like, "What's over here?" Uh, like, I, I seem to go everywhere. I did a lot of the collectible shit. I did a lot of the side character stuff. It was I was always doing something, and I just. I just made good use of like any, oh, I'm in this area. This is here. And I would just like, kind of like complete an area. Yeah. Like I, said, I didn't, what I, I didn't do everything and I didn't want to do everything because I didn't want to burn. Like, I don't want to say burn myself up, but like experience everything the game has before I get my collector's edition because the collector's edition was expensive and I want it to be more than just, oh, I got it. And I got a statue. Yeah. You know, I want to, I'm going to get, especially because since they're still improving on the game, I'm going to compare my experience on the pro at launch versus in a couple of months when I finally can get my fucking mail, hopefully months or less and uh, (laughs) experience what it's like when it's, you know, when it's how they intended it, I will say. And then, then I will be, I'll probably go back and forth and do, Complete them both. Maybe we'll get a platinum and a thousand out of a thousand gamers card. Who knows? Yeah, and I, I do think it is worth mentioning that we all played on. Well, you both played on Xbox One. No, I played on PS4 Pro. I just said we got this in name. Played on the Pro. <laughs> Chris played on the Xbox. Yeah. I played it on PC. We uh, have experienced the trifecta. Who played it on Switch? Nobody. Because it would suck on Switch. Yeah. <laughs> There's no way. Cause I, I heard, I mean, I even heard that Witcher 3 was just, it was not good. I wouldn't even, I w- there's certain games I just refuse to play on uh, that thing. Why that's you, one of them. Why would you take anything that's a graphical powerhouse and try to put it on something like that? Like, I will say Doom 2016 works pretty well on the Switch. When you're playing it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't need to. <laughs> yeah, docked, it's fine, but playing it handheld, not so much. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't need to be on there. Yeah. But uh, uh, for anybody who has been holding off for Cyberpunk, just wait. I, I mean, I guess at this point, I would probably tell people if you haven't played it yet and you do intend to get in one of the next gen consoles, just wait. Um, there's, I wouldn't say run out and buy like a, a pro or a Series X just so you can play Cyberpunk. It's a free, it's a free upgrade when you get it. So if you even do have it now, you can just play the free. That's upgrade. what I've been saying. Like, I bought it for the Xbox One, but well, like eventually I'm going to get a Series X. We know how I'll, we live. I'll just play it again then. To see what the differences are. Yeah, and, and like I have, I have, my, I have a beast of a computer, and I can't run the game on max settings. Uh, there was a new, the new generation of graphics cards just came out, um, and it, man, like I would love to see this game on full settings. Like even I'm running it basically on high, and it can go up to like ultra, uh, and on high it just it, it's amazing. The game looks amazing. There's so much depth in it. Um, yeah. I don't like, um, God, it's, it's like, a, I, uh, people acting like it doesn't work well on consoles are just either being too picky or they've got the base one. And I it's think all the, got, it's I all think the butthurt people, people that are still mad that it didn't come back, but out, come out back in April. The, um, uh, yeah, I mean, I wanted it back then, but I can wait. I've always yeah. said as excited as I am, I can wait when the only alternative is it comes out and it's broken crap. I, we've said this a million times on here that I am fine with waiting if it means the game's being made better. Yeah, I, if they I, got the game done and they're like, "How can we put more microtransactions and pay to win shit in this?" Then fuck mm-hmm. those guys. Yeah. But aside from that, more work just makes the game better. More to the game, it's only ever beneficial. And the problems that it's having are a hundred percent from people freaking out and going ballistic that it didn't come out when it was supposed to. This is why they delay. They're not delaying like, oh man, we're going to generate so much more hype if we just like wait a bit. And then when they're not going, hey, you know what? Fuck you guys. We got It's ready, but like 
I don't know. We're going to take a couple weeks off vacation and we'll, <laughs> we'll get it ironed out when we get back. They're not being lazy. Like they're, this is why maybe you should stop cyberbullying and death threatening developers into it's a, releasing it's a, a game. video game. Yeah, really? they would have they would have delayed it again, but people were like already sending them death threats that yeah, it's, hey, it's supposed to be out like insane, absolutely. Like why 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 would anybody be that like you understand that yeah, like you said, it's a video game, game. Plays or so they can. Well, it came out fifty seven years early, and this is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, not autobiographical <laughs> you sons of bitches just stop. Oh my like, people gotta stop being so entitled like they're only holding off to be dicks about it or something like i don't what i don't get people's like logic in complaining about a game being late they're not ever like we're just we're just i don't know we're how many we're, people are still complaining about uh metroid prime 4 <laughs> right yeah right i can wait yeah, I, I pre I pre ordered that screenshot. So I'll did admit, I. I'll admit, but I'm not mad that it's not out yet. No, I want the best game it, I can possibly. I can wait. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not already. I'm not mad already that twenty Cyberpunk 2078 isn't out. Like, <laughs> I can wait. Just because I want it now doesn't mean I get it now. Like that's what yeah. people's problem is. I want it now. That's all you're doing. You're sounding like three year olds when they want cake. I want it now. No, you have to wait a bit. You have to. Eat and it still has to finish. No, baking. I want it now. Yeah, you All want. Right, you want it now. No, you want soup. You want cake soup, or do you want yeah. a cake? Yeah. <laughs> Bitch. So yeah, anyway, excellent game. It's a very you fun game. It. Uh, what else have you guys been playing lately? Yeah, uh, Chris, what you what you been playing recently besides Cyberpunk and Predator? Um, I'm still playing through Cobra Kai. I'm kind of slowly making my way through it. Kind of want to extend it a little bit. It's not a race, no. But uh, I was playing my roulette backlog roulette game from the last episode of the Super Naval Brothers podcast, and kind of had a meltdown about it. <laughs> more, I, more on that next. Yeah, week. more on that in the next episode of Super Neighbor Brothers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be a rant. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, it's it's been like a yin and yang. I've been like, oh man, I got I played so many games that I really enjoy that for my ballot clog. And Chris is like, I found out how many games I hate for my ballot clog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, Jason's gotten basically ninety five percent games that he loves from his. <laughs> maybe ninety eight percent. I've gotten. I like, yeah. say my percentage of games that I like is maybe sitting at twenty three. <laughs> well, I have gotten so many yeah. bad games. That I played this year because of it, that I'm like, wow, how did this get a franchise type of thing? With one specific game, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. We uh well, we're we're at a low enough episode count that maybe we could just do a ranked thing for our uh our, our games of the year thing, <laughs> our our roulette picks of the year. Oh god. So stay tuned for that. Maybe we'll do that. <laughs> we'll find out what you hated the least, at least. <laughs> um but the last game that I played through that I that I enjoyed was probably the new Ghostbusters 2. Um, that was one of my roulette games. And that, that was a roulette really, game. That was my one of my roulette games. And I I've realized how I how much I don't play my retro collection stuff very often, as as often as I should. And playing that kind of made me go, I should go back into my collection and just start playing these goddamn things I'm spending yeah. all this I, money on. Are, uh, I'm not just trying to pat myself on the back. Or anything, but the backlog roulette has done so much for me as for playing games this year that I can't even express it. Like we have a hard enough time, all of us, all three of us here, and I'm sure anybody listening, keeping up with what's coming out. That it's so almost impossible to like keep up with co what's coming out and also keep up with the games that we buy, like we're playing them as they show up. That. This has not only enabled me to play those games, but while I've got the system hooked up, I just go, oh, fuck, I'm just going to I'll play this one right now. It's not, I don't even care. And I just, I've gone through days where like I beat my roulette game and then I'm like, well, well I've got the Wii hooked up. I'll, I've beaten like six other games that weren't on my list, but the sequel to the game. I hate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't, 
I didn't. Either. I said I wanted to experience it with you. I wasn't trying to be like, look how fast I beat the game that you hate. <laughs> I was like, hey, it was actually, you know, once it got past that part, it was it was enjoyable, and that's what I really liked about it. Like, I've gotten, I've really got lit in a fire under my ass using the backlog roulette. Is like I've also I've not only checked out these games, I've tried to beat everyone. I've only missed the mark by a couple of days uh, in one case, but aside from that, I've beaten them all. But like I said, having the system hooked up and just right in front of me, ready to go, has just enabled me to just go, oh, just keep putting them in, trying them out. I haven't liked every one that I've put in, but I've it, it's got some more beats under my belt. It's got more games that I'm like, why do I own this? Oh, I've played it. Now I don't feel like a piece of shit for having that for six years or anything anymore. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm starting to feel better about myself, like like not going. Whoa, uh, is this is this just cheap insulation for the walls? Not not cheap, super expensive insulation for the walls. Well, yeah, bougie, because like once I when I play the insulation when I play through New Ghostbusters two, I kept pulling Nintendo games off my wall and we're playing them, and I was just like, oh wow, this game is actually pretty fun. I this one not so much, you know that kind of thing. It was, yeah, it has been enabling me to play more games. And like it seems kind of gimmicky, but it's not. It's so it's such a useful tool. It's my favorite thing of 2020 is that we started doing this because I'm like, it's making me step away without feeling forceful. It doesn't feel like a job to actually like, you know, pull some games off the shelf and play them, like you said. So, like I said, not trying to pat myself on the back, but I'm like, I'm so <laughs> happy about that. And that's why I encourage anyone to participate in that with us like you don't even realize until you're, you're part of captain yeah algebra. church captain algebra is a <laughs> he, he he was our one of our first i think he was the first guest wasn't he yeah, he's yeah he first, was our first guest yeah. first guest and he's like he he you, call he texts me what number do you i'll tell him we're recording an episode tomorrow and he will text me that night what number did you get he doesn't yeah. want to wait for the episode to come out. He wants to know what number we got. I hope he still watches the episode, even if he you does. Give him the number. <laughs> I don't tell him. I don't tell him. Okay, which we'll have to start putting sporadically throughout the episode, so he doesn't just skip to the end or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Um, that being said, uh, is that all for, for games you played lately? Um, yeah, basically. All right, Church, what you got for us? All right. uh, so, of course. Okay. Uh, <laughs> replaying cyberpunk again so i'm still playing that um then before cyberpunk i'd played life is strange which was cartridge club's game of the month for december absolutely love that game highly recommend if you like um you know narrative focused games it's uh kind of like the the telltale games you know very 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 much like the telltale games yeah pretty much exactly kind of same deal uh very story heavy dialogue choices that actually make big changes throughout the game, uh, mm -hmm. much like the Telltale games. Uh, yeah. Great, great story, great characters. Um, definitely recommended. I'm, I'm really glad that Cartridge Club picked that for game of the month. Um, hopefully, I can get to the other one sometime here soon. Yeah, and I, was, then, I was intending to get to the other two, and I just yeah carried on living my life. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh right after the last episode of the podcast i think i'd mentioned that i was thinking about jumping into hades uh and sure enough Don't kill, Don't kill jump into hades, and i went hard on that game like holy crap uh within a week i put 40 hours in uh or 40 i think it was more i think it was like 45 hours Basically, I had like a, a, a couple days off or something, and I pretty much just nonstop played the game. And it, it a lot of nominations for Game of the Year, got like Indie Game of the Year. Oh, very, God. very much deserved. It is an incredible game. Um, it's m the first roguelike that I've played, uh, where basically like if you die, you have to like re restart, but it's it's all built into the narrative. And I think that's what really elevates this game is how well they've incorporated that gameplay style into the story of, of uh, your, the, the main character trying to accomplish the goal. And I don't want to say anything because the story is really cool. And that's really what kept me going. And the fact that 
Like you have to essentially, I won't say beat the game because uh, escaping is the whole goal. But you, when you finally escape, like that's not the end of the story. Like you have to do it. Technically, you have to do it ten times to 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 get the like actual. You prestige the story. Well, it's not even that. It's not like you're going. It's not like playing the 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 extra story in like Dragon Quest Eleven afterwards, where which you should absolutely yeah. everybody should you like it, it ties in. I need to play Dragon Quest one through ten first. No, you don't. Just play eleven. Paul. <laughs> well, we uh, we actually uh need there to be a since it's the dawn of the new generation, we need to uh stop with the post credit half the game is after the credits of the game shit because that happened too much this generation and yeah, people are like i saw credits i beat it They're like that was the first no, episode didn't. basically yeah <laughs> but uh believe the hype when it comes to hades uh that I, uh i did want to play it but i'm holding out for physical on the switch super giant makes great great games uh, previously, they made Transistor, Bastion. Um, there's another game that I hadn't played yet. I think it only had a digital release. But if you get a chance, check out Hades. Uh, there are things you can do to make it so it's more accessible, and make it easier, basically. And there's so don't let a difficulty thing turn you off from this game um, because it's okay. really uh, and you can each each run you do you can kind of cater it to how you like to play the game. It gives you lots of options. And it's different every single time. And okay. just, yeah, Hades. Loving every minute of it. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Jason, I know you've you, you've played a couple games since the last podcast. Several dozen. A <laughs> this guy's a monster. Poly, poly, poly kill suffers. Now you will too. Well, they, they, had, they had time off from having to say my name, except for, where is he? Did he die? Is he <laughs> yeah, okay? They yeah, actually... They actually messaged me to see if I was okay. Polykill legit message. And I was like, hey, man, hope you're not going through some bad, rough stuff. Hope you're okay. Hope you're well. Hope you're not mad at us for some reason and just not tagging us. <laughs> <laughs> so that felt, I felt, I felt a little bit bad for that. Uh, I believe we left off last episode. I beat uh, Gears Tactics. Mm -hmm. and since then, I'm just going to rattle off the list. I'm barely going to talk about any of it. I'll make throw in a comment or two. Uh, X Men Mutant Apocalypse, yep. X Men Genesis, X Men Two. That we we talk about those ones. Yep, right. did the X Men games. All right. What about Spider Man? Which Spider Man? Miles Morales. No. Okay. Well, we'll start here. Okay. <laughs> oh, literally forty games ago that I beat. <laughs> Spider, <laughs> Spider Man, Miles Morales, excellent. As I said, Extreme Ghostbusters, Codecto One, Streets of Camarucho. Gunsmoke on NES, Blair Witch, My Friend Pedro, Samurai Aces, Gun Barrack, Tengai, Samurai Aces 3, Biolab Wars, Battle Back Raid, Blood Bros, Mischief Makers, Life is Strange, Made of Skur, Kickmaster, Lords of Thunder, Shadowgate, Cyberpunk, Beyond Oasis, Arcus Odyssey, Baroque, speaking of roguelikes, uh, House of the Dead, Overkill Extended. Kind of let down by that. Conduit, Conduit 2, Marvel Super Heroes, War of the Gems, which was a weird psychic tag team beat with Captain Algebra. Yeah. I was just <laughs> playing it, and then I saw that he was starting to play, and I was like, what are the fucking chances that we both took this random... But yeah, it was kind of cool. We beat it basically at the same exact time. So, uh, so that was a cool story. Uh, Mad World... Halo 4, Resident Evil, The Umbrella Chronicles, uh, Cadence of Hyrule, Crypt of the Necrodancer, Dra Dragon Mark for Death. Ah, that was my 150th game of the year. Uh, Azure Striker, Gunvolt, Zardion, which Zardion, as I, I don't think I've really ever heard anyone talk about Zardion, but I think that has to be my most liked or interacted beat tweet ever. Because apparently it, it must be big in Asia or something. Because I didn't use any hashtags or anything, but I've got like a bunch of retweets on my B tweet from like <laughs> Japanese people. Interesting. That 
And, and, and in their bio, it's it a big it, game in Japan. You don't know. Zardion might be like a big thing, like Gundam and shit over there. It, it wasn't uh, over here. Yeah, because I said I've never heard anyone talk about they it. They had a copy, a complete in box copy at that store that I used to go to downtown all the time. The people play games. They had a complete in box copy that was on that shelf the entire time I had been going to that store for three straight years. It was sitting there and so, no one ever bought it. So yeah, I actually got it from uh, Nintendo. Spell it for our listeners in case they don't track Twitter and stuff. X A R D I O N. Never heard of it. It must be there's something going on. They're making something because it I'm not saying I got like thousands of retweets. Remaster. I got, I got more than one retweet, which is pretty much the maximum I, I ever get of anything. <laughs> and uh yeah, like a bunch of likes. And I was like, I don't even think any of these people follow me. So it was like, oh, that's kind of cool. I mean, the you know, my my friends, a couple that always are nice enough to like my my beats. Anyway, I, that was just a kind of a standout for me, uh, uh, randomly. I uh, also beat Adventures of Batman and Robin on Super Nintendo. Hard game. Hard fun, though. Uh, Bravely Default, which is a game that... I, 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 Witcher 3 Syndrome. I played the absolute shit out of it. I loved it, but it was one of the games that I used to bring to work to play at Walmart. And since I quit Walmart, I don't think I played it because I don't really often sit around playing a handheld. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to just give the handheld some love. And uh, I wouldn't want to say it, it wasn't like the Witcher where I could go and start the last mission, but it was, <laughs> it was probably like another 13 hours. I played of it to, to beat it, but I absolutely love that game. I was thinking about how like I have to beat it before Bravely Default 2 comes out in February. So now I won't feel like an idiot for buying it when I didn't beat the first one. And I know there's Bravely Second, which is like a spinoff sequel. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if I've got time to beat that before. But, I, but I'll still be buying Bravely Default 2. So super excited. That was probably one of my... Uh, like I said, along with Witcher 3 was one of the ones I like really wanted to tie up this year. So glad that happened. Uh, Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles, Azure Striker Gunvolt 2. Those games are so fun. Uh, it's a it's like a pretty cheap two-pack that you can get for PS4 and the Switch. And it actually got me playing my Switch. Uh, Transformers Battlegrounds, which was a... Uh, like a strategy, kind of like Gears Tactics, a strategy game with the Transformers. Pretty cartoony looking, but pretty fun. Uh, Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate, the handheld 3DS or Vita game. I think it's on the 360 and PS3 also. Uh, Contra 4. I literally just beat it like 15 minutes before we started this episode. Contra and that's it. Awesome. I'm sorry. I, you just feel like you watched the end credits of this fucking episode <laughs> yeah uh i like to play video games yes we all do I, I don't do it for the numbers when i'm when i reach when i'm close to reaching like a milestone thing at the end of the year is probably the closest i'd, I'd say that i try to bump up my numbers but i didn't want to do it what i would what i would say cheaply with like short games so i really was like okay i'm I'm shooting for 150. I'm about 10 away, but I don't want to just throw in like some fighting games and play through the story mode or something. Like I want to do something with some substance, and I feel like I did that, so I didn't cheat myself. Uh, I got one more to go for 160 this year. I'm gonna try and make that happen. I'm gonna try some Metal Slug Seven because me and me and Cap were talking about that, so I think that's gonna be next one. Then I'm gonna slumber for several months again. Nice. No, I'm just kidding. I'm gonna still play games. I uh, like video games. Yeah. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to play Cyberpunk 2077 until completion tonight. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Game okay, brings me to completion on a nightly basis. Yeah. I, was gonna, I was gonna say, but I. Ooh. I, 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 thought, I I thought my white knight. Tell uh, me more. I thought my white knight comment kind of. I, I reached my limit of things I can say like that, so I just. <laughs> Shut my mouth. <laughs> All right. So uh, sorry about. It. I feel like I just did a. a, a... Yeah. So um, real quick, I'll, I'll give a shout out to uh, games that came out in December. Notable releases. Usually we do the you know next 
upcoming notable games uh, coming up soon, but we missed a little bit here. Fortunately, December was kind of a uh, a chill month for game releases. Uh, Jason, you picked up Immortals: Phoenix Rising. That that was released, of course. Cyberpunk. I picked it up too. Uh, I was hoping to get a deal on on that already. That I, I did. I ended up getting it for like thirty bucks yeah, off. I heard it was discounted pretty big already. Which yeah, got, it's like right half off, off basically. Yeah. Moment yeah. Best Buy's got it for the half off right now. Um, John Wick Hack. John Wick Hex is out now. Uh, I have two copies. If someone wants one, I do. There you go. Uh, <laughs> God damn you. <laughs> Yeah, th- those are like the big ones. There's a, a bunch of other stuff. Like- Cyberpunk. I was literally just about to order that shit. <laughs> um, and then next couple weeks, not not a whole lot at all. Actually, well, that's a per- perfect time to yeah to Jay- play through the backlog. backlog. <gasps> so if only there was some roulette to help us pick what to play. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, this whole episode is just a fucking advertisement. Yeah. <laughs> To so, be continued. <laughs> then, <laughs> corporate quick, chills. <laughs> uh, I'd like to give a shout out to the ongoings of the Cartridge Club and the games of the month over there. Um, so since it's be a good year, be, since it's been a little bit, um, I'm gonna be on it. The November uh, podcast for Banjo and Kazooie is now available. Yeah. Uh, so definitely recommend that. Uh, December's game was Life is Strange. That episode will be out. Um, I think the second week of January uh, and January's game of the month is Wonder Boy three, the dragon's trap original and remake. Are I almost, cool. You know, I, I almost do that in like twice. And then I was like, Oh shit. I keep forgetting that it's like coming up. So I just put it back. I, I installed it and I was about to start it up and I was like, wait, and I, and I just happened to check, but I'm pretty stoked to finally play that. I'm going to play yeah. both. Ver- I'm going to play both versions that I've got. Just play but- the Oh my God! February and March. Yeah. Holy fuck, man! Going on, going, going on in the Cartridge Club coming up. What's going on February? February is Ghostbusters. Oh, uh, two th- oh. When was the original? Oh. Was that? oh, this is part of the Ecto One. Oh. <laughs> Ghostbusters game. So One of my favorite games in the last gen. <laughs> I, I told you. You gotta play. You're finally gonna play it. If only it had co-op. Yeah. Me and Chris could bully you into playing online with us. Right. (laughs) Ghostbusters. The video. Yeah. Oh, the remaster. Two thousand nine slash remastered. But. But March is gonna be a holy shit month. March is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles the month. Yeah. Just (laughs) Ninja Turtles. Like all the games. Like they've been, I they've been, am going to be ridiculous. I'm putting it out there right now. I will beat the entire series on console and handhelds of Ninja Turtles. Gauntlet. And the only one I'm not looking forward to is the first NES one. <laughs> but that's the first, that's as you first. should be. It's cool. Yeah. I don't I don't hate it. It's just frustrating. It's just, just like I I me and Church were actually just talking about this yesterday. I don't hate it. It's just that two and three are so much better that it's just like it falls by the wayside. <laughs> and it's a little frustrating. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not like, ooh, this shit's easy. It's a uh, it's it's definitely a game you gotta practice. Yeah. So I know. might I might even practice it a bit here and there because that's gonna be the first one I'm taking down. Cause then from there it's smooth sailing. I've got the entire series. The only game I don't have. Is tournament fighters on NES because that's like way more expensive for a game that's not that good. And uh, I've got the other tournament fighters for Super Nintendo and Genesis. One just got up in our, the Genesis. You one. got that from me. I know. I said See, it, there's so. a reason why I gave it to you. Oh, thanks, bud. Because we're friends. No, All right, because it's terrible. Yeah. I didn't want it in my collection anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, then also I wanted to shout out the quick save club, uh, their game of the month for December and January is screamer two, which is a DOS based racing game. They're going old school because they're a PC game of the month and you can't forget about the classic DOS games. Cause there's a lot of good. Yeah, work. I can. <laughs> uh, don't tell you on that one. Sweet. So 
as we're kind of wrapping things up here, yeah. talk about uh, give a shout out to what you got going on next couple weeks and games you're gonna be playing, videos you're gonna be putting out. Chris, yeah. Um, <laughs> once I finish Cyberpunk, hopefully within either today or tomorrow, um, I'm definitely gonna jump into Ghost of Tsushima. That was gonna be the game I played during my vacation for the last two weeks until I got Cyberpunk, so I got pushed Ooh. over. So yeah, Ghost of Tsushima. No a worthy, a worthy, a worthy, a worthy push your side, push yeah. Yeah. that side. So yeah, that's next up. Um, and uh, I have my movies that would make great video games part four collaboration that I've been working on for basically a year Woo. with 20, 20 guests in it, which was another thing I was going to be doing during this vacation. And then cyberpunk kind of took over my life. Did you get an invite to this one, uh, church? You guys got, were in ones I already. One. I, I could be you in. guys were in part two. Yeah. We well, we yeah. bring you back to be a repeat offender. Come on, man. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. I'm just uh, yeah, but that's gonna take some doing. That's gonna be the next uh, like edited video. But no death threats. It'll, it'll it'll be ready when it's ready. No death yeah. threats. People. Yeah, we don't. We, no, uh, yeah, we don't. We don't. This need is not a cyberpunk, cyberpunk situation, everybody. Like, yeah, what's up with these visuals? <laughs> You'll be glitching all over the shit. Your head will be floating sideways and shit. What's going on with this? That's just my editing style. Yeah. <laughs> you, you actually should. You actually should just edit that joke in there. I should. <laughs> um, and yeah. then I'm probably gonna do a couple of top three Tuesday videos, like I usually do at the beginning of the year, with like one being like my top three games of 2020 and yes. top three games that I played in 2020. Maybe we'll have to. Uh, I'm starting video stuff again. Maybe we'll have to both do one. Get back on. Get back on. Maybe the, get your on it too. Get the top three yeah. Tuesday train. Cool. Uh, cool. Uh, Jason, what you got going on? I put out a video that wasn't just the podcast. What? Yeah, uh, my it. my son. Uh, noticed that everything's set up here. I saw he, the whole thing. And he goes, "Dad, can we uh, can we do the open that other Ghostbuster box that you've had for a year that's just been right there where I can see it." I was like, oh, yeah. So I wasn't completely set up. Uh, I feel a little bit bad about the sound in the video because I didn't have my, like, sound dampening. It was fine. Foam. It was fine. It was fine. Oh, okay. Well, but, yeah, I'm happy we got a video. We got some more stuff for the Ghostbusters collection. Some of it's behind me. But, uh, yeah, more Ghostbusters stuff is always good. And continuing with Ghostbusters shit, I got the massive new Ghostbusters Afterlife lego ecto one and we started building that yesterday and it is a huge undertaking and i actually started filming that so it's going to be like the millennium falcon video i did like two years ago with araya but uh all four kids are helping me so that's both helpful and counterintuitive because uh the three-year-old is just not just there to go like this so it's like constantly like uh, and uh, it's good to have the older ones on the outside because it'd be like Find that whenever something falls down and they're playing hide and seek at the same time. So it's going to be good. Uh, yeah, hopefully I'll have that video up soon because uh, I know they're going to want to keep building that shit. Uh, I don't know what games I'm playing. You know me. I'm I'm dust in the wind. I, I just go wherever the wind takes me. I might start playing the conduit again. Do it. I might start playing one of these three games. That's That might be it. I don't know. You never know. I might play something on Master System for all I know. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, 2020, good year for gaming, shit year for literally everything else. True that. What do you got going on, buddy? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'm, I've just restarted Cyberpunk, so I'm on my second playthrough, so I'll probably mostly be playing that. You taking alternate routes and shit? Nah, uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did mess up a couple things uh, I'm going to correct this time doing a couple things different but I'm playing I, I made the exact same V same look at same background and everything you gotta find all the hookers you can bang I already did okay. uh, <laughs> <laughs> like I did that before I started the first story I machine. accidentally triggered a, a man on man scene yeah, but yeah. I didn't realize that's what I was doing was well, when, when, when you're, for that one story mission no it was just I was talking to somebody and there was a guy that said you could talk to and I clicked it and next thing you know I was in a man on man sex scene. I was like, yep. oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> hi. You hi. I was like, oh I didn't okay, I guess this is happening. Like whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. 
Uh, usually I have away with words, I guess. Usually I have games on deck. <laughs> I have nothing on deck right now. Um, although I'm I got sure. there's a few games. I'm sure I do. There's so a... uh, we'll see what happens, and uh, I might I might put out a video. I don't know. We'll see. Do it. We'll see. We'll see. Do now. Come on. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to roll into doing videos. I might even put a put a video together of a top action figures and shit about this year because I've bought that many that I might have actually do like a top five shits there you go top three i don't know well. uh but let me go ahead and let everybody know how they can get a hold of us if they would like to and i would recommend doing it because we're all cool cool folks what else are you gonna do we're all we're all under like second lockdown and shit yeah, stuff. uh so of course for the game tennis podcast you could find us on youtube soundcloud and your favorite podcast apps of your choice just look up the game tennis podcast uh, for myself, you can look me up on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram as the Game Grinder. All of those, all of those, as well as Corpse Flood Gaming on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That's and me, not you. I think Chris, you happen to be on all those platforms as well. I do, oh. but they're just different names. How can people find you? YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. It's the old ass retro gamer. On uh, Twitter, it is OA Retro Gamer. Okay. Definitely, yeah, definitely. If you're not already following Chris, uh, YouTube especially, you need to do that. Yeah. But I think everybody at priority did. Would you the not? moral thing to do. Why would you not? You hate fun? Do you, do you not like friendships? Yeah, right. <laughs> do uh, we are great people to know. Why, why are you <laughs> like this? Who hurt you? Right? If you're not following and friends with Chris, what's up? Cool. Yeah. All right. See, now also, Super Bully Brother just came back to play. Hell yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. All right. Follow, so, more, follow more of our shenans on our other podcast. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Super Enabler Bros as well. And shh, the movie starting. And yeah. that too. Uh, yeah. So that's going to do it for this episode of the Game Tense Podcast. Last episode of 2020. Guys, final thoughts 2020. Go. <laughs> Bullshit. Uh, bag of oh, dicks yeah like i said good for games but also shitty for me getting being able to access things that i've bought there's a bunch <laughs> of games i could potentially be so on you've my, been having that problem right. since covid started am i having that problem this whole month yeah it's bullshit crappy year get your shit together chicago postal system 2021 <laughs> don't disappoint us yes yeah. better it has, game. To, it has to be better it has to be better Yes. I don't want to say it can't get worse because then it will. No, it has to be better. You gotta be up, gotta be positive, bro. All right. I'm just not COVID positive. All right, guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We will talk. Happy New Year to everybody and let's play more games next year. Absolutely. I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to beat more games next year. That's not a thing. I'm just playing what I play, beating what I beat. The only thing I'm gonna beat is my meat. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> Right? <laughs> I'm good one, guys.